Hey guys, this is Karin here. I do in Saudi Arabia, studying 10th grade, and I'm going to international school. Today, in a very exciting se uh, segment, we'll discuss about graphs of polar equations. And this graphs of polar equations can be well, the most interesting thing, uh, and interrelated with graph, all the mathematic. Now, what I want you to do is consider this. After what we talk about, a polar form. If this was a polar form, cosine of theta, which is 30, let's say, we can say that since we can make this table value, okay, this would be norm theta, this would be 3 times theta, this would be cos times the theta, and this would be phi cosine of theta. plug in 0 for this one, you get 0 for this one, 1 for this one, 5 for this one, okay, because you know the logic is going, if you have cosine of 0, it's 1, then cosine, this would be equaling out to 1, 1 times 5 is 5, okay, then if you plug in 10, you get 30 here, and if you get 0 0.87 over here, and you would get 4.3 over here. Let's move on to something. Uh, let's say we plug in 50. Well, you get 150 here. Then you get negative 0 0.87. Then you would get over here negative 4.3. If you were to now plug in 60, you would get 180 over here. Then you would get negative 1 here and negative 5 over here. Okay? Now, this is something very important, and it's very important as a sign of cosine graphs that we will talk about. Now, here we can also say, we can also replace these values. Let's just go ahead and erase this up. Observe these things for a minute. It will make sense to you uh, after we're done with this. Okay? So if you plug in from 0 to 30, you will get your answer to be 0 from 90. You would get 1, 2, 0. Okay? You would get 5, 2, 0. If you plug in your value to be 0 to 30 as your theta. Okay? Then if you plug in your theta to be uh, 30, oops, 30 to 60, you would get your values to be 90 to 180, okay? Then you would get your answer to be 0 to negative 1, and this one would be 0 to negative 5. This one over here, if you plug in 60, 60 to 90, you would basically get 180 to 270 and then here you will get negative 1 to 0 you will get negative 5 to 0 here if you plug in oof, let's say 150 to 180 okay you would get 450 to 540 then here you would get 0 2 negative 1 and 0 2 negative 5. So you see you observe something which is going along these lines, okay? Now I want you to observe it by yourself, okay? Now let's go ahead and talk about this particular function that we took. Let's go ahead and erase this thing up. We said that Everything consists is consisting of x and y. Oops. X and y. So what does this form over here? So the x form for this one would be phi cosine of 30. Okay, if you phi cosine of 30. 
30 over here. Then you do a cosine of t. Okay, now for the second one, well, that would be phi cosine 3t times sine of t. Early in this section, before we started this section, we, we discussed about the graphs of equations on rectangular coordinate plane, which got some mileage out of the identified symmetry which we can find in x and y intercepts. We can go through the same analysis as right here. If you wanted to graph a polar function, it would basically look like this. It would have some over here. Then it would go through over here. Then it would go through over here. Basic this over here. So if this was polar axis, this is how the graph would basically look like. And there's lots of symmetry involving right here as well. So let's go ahead and go to a graph. Go through a core graph with basically if you have an angle line that is making an angle of theta, it would be some r and some d, right? So if you were to take this one over here, take this data, this would be a polar axis as well, this would be r as this was, and it would have r and data as well oh, over here now, but data would be negative because it's a negative angle, right? Now here, you would have, let's go over here, reflect this over here, and this would have some theta, and you would name that some r comma theta, right? Now this over here, what we just made, known as pole. Okay, and this as we know is the radiance of pi is equal to pi over 2. So what we can do is basically we can write this as negative r because it's reflecting it towards it directly be pi minus some theta. Okay, so in the actual form, we can write this as r is equal to phi cosine of 3 theta. Okay, then we can write it as phi is equal to r phi cosine of 3 times the negative theta. Okay, and then we are moving on to this one, which basically makes it r is equal to phi cosine of 3 times the theta. Okay, so you see we we ended up with the same equation what we started. We went to the past process, okay, reflecting here we had negative, here we have a positive again, so here we have the same equation as we do over here. So we can conclude that the r over here is equal to the r over here, and the angle over here is equivalent to the angle over here by only using a polar equation. Now the third kind of symmetry, this is the third symmetry over here, reflection and then flip across the y-axis, okay? Double reflection, that is known as symmetry across the origin. Now symmetry across the origin basically looks like this. Go ahead and erase this. Symmetry across the origin basically looks like this, you would have something going on over here. Okay, so this symmetry across the origin. Now what's, what's happening, we talked about this in our previous section, what is the symmetry across the origin. First, it could reflect over here like this, and then it reflects over here. Or, this is the first part, or it could reflect over the y-axis. I'm trying my best to draw this thing, but I can't. So, let's just say you go over here, something, and then you reflect it down. It's double rotation. Flip across the y and then flip across the x. Okay? So we can say flip 
across the y and then y coordinate thing y graph flips across the x axis so the flip the x okay x would turn into x prime and that would be symmetry across the origin okay now same with the case of the one we took over here if we get this over here and we can reflect this as this one and then we can reflect oops we can reflect this as this one and then we can reflect this right here okay so we have some r over here some theta r over here some theta angle here r over here so basically we can say that negative r and theta is equivalent to r comma the pi plus theta they both are equal now to summarize this the first thing the polar axis can do is basically replace r and let me just go ahead and write it down for you guys so you can understand better because when I try to speak I just speak in the way that I understand but I don't know help you guys I make this special notes to make make your understanding clearer okay so the first would be polar axis would basically replace these are the procedure because we are trying to graph the uh, polar coordinate plane with r and negative theta or you can say negative r or theta minus pi minus theta okay second step would be the line of pi is equal to pi uh, theta is equal to pi over 2 it, what you need to do now here is replace the r theta with r pi minus theta or it could be negative r and negative theta. The last step is basically the pole that we figured out. The pole, to find that you basically replace r with and theta with r pi plus theta or you can do this procedure by negative r and theta whichever way you like okay so these are some helpful things and we talked about the symmetry graphing symmetry of uh, symmetry across the origin of polar coordinates so i hope you guys enjoy this video give it a like comment and subscribe there's a facebook uh, url down below in the description area give that a like share this video with your friends and family thank you for watching again bye